I want to talk about the Muse album Drones, which was released last year. Over the last two or three years, I've been getting into Muse, and many of their songs have resonated quite strongly with me in terms of my gender journey and coming out as genderqueer. Probably it's just that Matt Bellamy has a genius for writing lyrics that can powerfully apply to anyone's situation. But Time Is Running Out has been an important song for me, referring to me suppressing my femininity during my marriage and as I grew more aware of my transgender tendencies, knowing that the relationship needed to come to an end. Butterflies and hurricanes seem to relate to coming out about being trans or genderqueer and knowing it was going to be tough in the future, but that I have to do it. My time is now. I must use this, this chance to be heard. And Supremacy on the Second Law album was relevant to me when I was feeling all feminist and wanting to smash the patriarchy like some genderqueer superhero. <laughs> and then there's Explorers, which I know is about the environment, but I just can't help hearing the chorus in terms of gender. Free me. Free me from this world. I don't belong here. It was a mistake imprisoning my soul. So, on to drones. The surface layer of meaning is of course about war with some relationship stuff thrown in. But although it is most certainly my own interpretation, and not necessarily intended by the band, though who knows, Matt Bellamy is a clever enough lyricist to have probably intended all kinds of layers of meaning. In any case, I can see a deeper level of meaning that works for me personally in terms of gender. Oh, there you go again, Kim, reading gender into everything. Yeah, well, I like to over-interpret over things sometimes, and I like to read gender into things, <laughs> so there. Dead Inside has already become an anthem for me to express feelings of sexual frustration and gender dysphoria. I have listened to the song over and over and over, and I never seem to get sick of it. I suppose that's what happens when a song comes along that so perfectly mirrors all of your feelings and who you are as a person. It seems to me to be about burying your femininity and becoming more masculine in a relationship with a woman because it's what she wants and needs you to be, but you end up dead inside. There are tons of lines in this song that connect so powerfully to how I feel and have felt in the past that it honestly makes me want to break down and cry at times. You can find me, then erase me, babe. You're free to touch the sky while I am crushed and pulverised. I need you to see who I am. Don't leave me out in the cold. Don't leave me here to die. I gave you everything. I can't give you any more. You taught me to lie without a trace. On the outside, I'm the greatest guy. But now I'm dead inside. It's brilliant. Heartbreaking and brilliant. <laughs> My gender interpretation goes something like this dead inside, I've already explained. Then psycho is, of course, the tyranny of masculin masculinity, being expected to be masculine. This war and being in the army as metaphor for masculinity itself is not so bizarre an interpretation, given the obvious Full Metal Jacket references in the song, and I have read in a book about Stanley Kubrick about how there are references to sex, gender and masculinity in Full Metal Jacket. Mercy is a straightforward plea to be rescued from this stifling, toxic masculinity. Reapers is full of lines that suggest something deeper going on than mere warfare. Home has become a killing field. The world is on your side, you've got the CIA, babe. It feels to me like a battle of the sexes. That the drones are on both sides of this battle, feminism and anti-feminism. The pain of restrictive gender roles, both masculine for the men and feminine for the women, gets turned into hatred and resentment for each other. Then comes the handler that, given my interpretation of the previous song, can be aimed at both the forces of masculinity and feminism. The two forces that fuck with men's minds. And women's too, actually. It's just the other way around in terms of who is trying to recruit you and who is trying to fight you. And then the songs of revolt and resistance. The defector and revolt. Which, in the context of my gender interpretation, would be akin to becoming genderqueer, for revolting utterly from oppressive gender stereotypes. But then we come to the part of the album which I feel in terms of embracing the femininity I've been craving all my life. Aftermath is a beautiful love song, but it's more than that. 
it's a coming home, a realising who you are, and as the song itself says, where I belong. It's a sign of what could and should be. For me, it's a trans-lesbian love song. My realisation that it's always been all about women. I have craved femininity all along, both in my sexual partners and within myself. Femininity has been denied to me, and now I'm coming home and embracing it. And then the globalist. And here I need to reunite my deeper gender meaning with the surface meaning of war for the song to truly work. On the gender level, it is a warning to myself. Don't eradicate gender. If it's femininity that you crave, you'll destroy the very thing you've been seeking. But it's more than that. All the agony, the pain, the dysphoria peppered throughout the entire album comes to a head here in a horrifying scenario of destroying the whole world. On the surface level, the protagonist and his lover are the only two people left alive, the whole world having been destroyed by nuclear weapons. And so the album reaches its heartbreaking conclusion. Now, there's no countries left, no culture left, there's no one left to love. When he, or she, just wanted, just needed to be loved. Well, that's my personal take on the album. It's just my own interpretation, and the way I've found to appreciate what is certainly a stirring and powerful work of art. But like with all great art, each individual listener must find their own meaning and significance in the work. So please, take everything I've said with a pinch of salt. I can't discuss the last track without also discussing the music on the album as a whole. Personally, I think it is phenomenally good and powerful stuff. A lot of heavy rock sounds on here. Reaper's Here Comes the Drones moment and the countdown apocalyptic middle section of The Globalist are especially heavy. And Defector and Resist are rocking tracks of resistance. I can't help but think of The Who at their best. But emotional lyrics and piano-led balladry are also plentiful here, found pretty much throughout the entire album. When describing the album, the words emotional, spectacular and epic come immediately to mind. It's a feast of drama and excitement, catharsis and heartbreak, an emotionally fulfilling piece of work for sure. Even on happy rocking tracks like Defector, the lead guitar plucks at the heartstrings. Several moments on this album make me want to weep uncontrollably. It really is a very powerful album. Satisfying is another good word to describe it. You feel like you've had the musical equivalent of a three-course meal by the end of it. And yet, I still feel like I want to listen to the album all over again. It could become dangerously addictive. <laughs> and so the last track, Drones. It's a classical choral type affair, like some kind of polyphonic chant. Very intoxicating, beautiful, and shows just how classy Muse are as a band. I love this album, love the band, and I cannot recommend it enough. So that's all really. Thanks for watching. And always remember, you can revolt. Just try not to blow up the world in the process.